Good day Grade 12s, welcome to the second lesson in Organic Molecules. In this lesson we're going to be studying the structure of organic molecules, in other words how they are drawn so that we can understand what we are looking at. I'd like to show you some of the ways in which organic chemists show the structure of organic molecules. It's logical and easy. Just follow me each step of the way. To start with, when we draw the structure of a compound containing carbon, we must ensure that every carbon atom has four bonds to it. Here, for example, is methane, which consists of one carbon atom. Four bonds, all bonded to a hydrogen atom. Ethane works in the same way. Here are two carbon atoms, each with four bonds, and hydrogen atoms. In propane, we see that the three carbon atoms each have their usual four bonds, and hydrogen atoms. When we draw the molecules in this way, we show their structure with the position of the atoms and the bonds. We call these two-dimensional drawings structural formulae. We can also write the chemical formula of organic molecules in the same way as other formulae, starting with carbon. We call this the molecular formula. It only lists the number of each type of atom but does not tell us how they are arranged inside the molecule. The molecular formula for methane is therefore CH4. The molecular formula for ethane is C2H6. And that of propane is C3H8. So, to recap, this is the structural formula of ethane, while this is its molecular formula. Now that we know that carbon makes four bonds, it is easier to understand why carbon is present in more than 10 million different compounds. One of the things that makes carbon so special is that it forms bonds to itself to make chains. Notice how each of the carbon atoms still has four bonds to other atoms. Some of those bonds are between two carbon atoms. Now, we can always put the molecule together differently to make a new molecule with a different name and different properties. We call these groups of molecules isomers. Isomers are molecules that have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. This is very similar to building with bricks. Like carbon, the bricks and cement can be used in a different way to make different structures. A wall can be built in many different ways, using the same bricks and cement by simply combining them in different shapes. In the same way, isomers are different compounds built from exactly the same atoms. It can be tiring drawing in all the bonds and hydrogen atoms on carbon structures. Organic chemists sometimes use a different way of representing organic molecules without showing all the bonds. This type of representation is called a condensed structural formula. It still shows the number of each type of atom while keeping the order in which they are bonded. Let's look at the example and see how a two-dimensional structure can be written as a condensed structural formula. We start at one end, first writing the C symbol for the first carbon atom. Next, we write down the hydrogen atoms that are joined to it. The second C has an H attached as well as two CH3 groups. This means that one of the CH3 groups forms a branch or side chain of the main chain. If there is a branch or side chain, we place the symbols inside brackets in the condensed formula. See if you can write the condensed structural formula for these two molecules, ethene and propyne. Something a bit different for you. 
The condensed molecular formula for ethene is CH2CH2, and for propyne, it is CH3CCH. Can you see that we will always know that there are double or triple bonds because of the smaller number of hydrogen atoms on each carbon? We can now see how to draw organic molecules and how they can be rearranged to make different molecules, remembering to keep four bonds to each carbon each time. So let's just recap what we have learned already. We, first of all, we have the structural formula. This is basically the way we draw it out. Okay, it's the structural formula. Let's choose something like this. So we've got carbon, 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 carbon with some hydrogens. And yes, let's make it very nice and easy. Lots of hydrogens. So what's important in the structural formula is that you draw your molecule and you make sure that you fill in all the bonds and all the arms in other words the what's on the end of them okay so you can't just go oh i know that this is carbon and just draw lines like that and i was you must assume well the markets assume that you know that they're hydrogens you need to draw all the hydrogens on it as well okay so that would be the structural formula and if i just count that that's one two three four five that happens to be an alkane and it is pentane you'll learn more about that in the next few lessons okay so that's the structural formula condensed structural formula is still showing us what carbons they are and how they are joined okay but the what it does is make it easier to type out so the condensed structural formula is really for when people are typing it out in exam papers or in documents so instead of drawing it what you would do is you go okay fine i've got one carbon here it's my first carbon it has got three hydrogens on it so therefore there's an h3 then my next carbon, let me change color so you can see what I'm doing. On my next carbon, we've got a carbon and it's got two hydrogens on it, H2. Let's change colors again. On my next carbon, we've got another carbon and we've got two hydrogens joined to that. And then we've got another carbon with two hydrogens joined to that. And then finally, we've got this last carbon here with three hydrogens joined to it. Okay, so basically with the condensed structural formula, we are still showing how the carbons and hydrogens are laid out, but as they are laid out here, but we are writing it in a line. And there's a cheaty way that we can write this as well. We could actually write here CH3, and then we could group these three because they are identical. So therefore we could say, well, we've got CH2, but we've actually got one, two, three of them in a row, okay? And then we have our final CH3. So if I had to read this one here, I would say, okay, fine, there's CH3, one carbon with three hydrogens. There are three carbons, there's the three carbons, each with two hydrogens attached, the two hydrogens attached, okay? And then finally, another carbon with three hydrogens on it, okay? But strictly speaking, the condensed structural formula to ask you to draw it is this one here, but sometimes they give you this one and you need to be able to understand what it is. Finally, the molecular formula. The molecular formula is just really saying Right, what do we have? We have how many carbons, how many hydrogens, how many oxygens, etc. So if we go back to the original one, okay, and we count, we've got one, two, three, four, five carbons. So we go C5, and then we count the hydrogens, and I'm going to do it in a different color. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, so that's H12, and obviously you don't do it in different colors, you can just do it in pen. So what is the molecular formula telling us? It is just telling us how many carbons and how many hydrogens this makes up without telling us about the structure whatsoever. It doesn't tell us that the five carbons are in a row, or maybe there's three carbons and maybe a carbon here and a carbon there with a whole bunch of hydrogens on it. It doesn't tell us how they arrange. It just tells us what the molecular makeup is 
of the organic compound. And you guys need to know the difference between these three formula. Okay, so please make sure you know how to do it. Right, and that's it for this lesson. Have a great day.